Welcome to episode 26 of Tem Talk, your weekly podcast dedicated to the Creature Collection MMO Tem Tem. Today's main topic is going to be Kisawat Tem Tems, as well as some community events and tournaments. As always, I'm Von Lin. How are you, Gaijin Boo and Kennedy, joining me as always on our new and improved sexy time slot, Monday nights? New and improved? I mean, I don't know if I'd say improved, but it's new. Uh, I'm doing, <laughs> doing all right. This is uh, Monday's my busiest day and usually i'm pretty brain dead by the end of the night because i'm dealing with customer service all day but uh yeah yeah i'm doing doing all right von i've been meaning no to complaint. ask you about that you, you work a really different schedule throughout the week because you work like night some days no. and during the day other days don't you no. just monday monday is my only day shift so your other four are all at night yes and it's like 10 times busier on mondays you know, I have to deal with 10 times more people asking me wonderful things. Kenny, <laughs> can, can, how are you doing? Where are you broadcast from today? You're like from a different location, I feel like, every week. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm on the seaside part of uh, the Gulf. Of, no, I'm kidding. Um, this is just a painted wall behind me. Uh, I'm in my actually, I'm in my childhood room. Um, oh. This is the room I grew up in. I am back at my mother's house. She's moving out, so I've been helping move things out of here. And I've got a ticket booked for home August 22nd. So I got one more episode of Tim Talk here. And then um, the episode after next, I'll finally be back in Seattle. And that will conclude my like continental U.S. traveling. Are you are you excited to be back home home? Are you, are you sick of living on the road yet? Or have you, you been enjoying it? You know, I am like... It's just something you don't miss and you don't know you'll miss until, you know, it, you don't have it. And it's like, I'm so tired of being shuffled space to space. Right. Like traveling has been wonderful, but just not having a space to like sit down and be my own space is as is rough. So there's no furniture left in the house today because we moved all the furniture out. Right now I have a dinner stand for my laptop with my notes on it. And I have an ironing board for my tablet that has my web camera and microphone in it. So like my desk is so hodgepodge makeshift right now. It's insane. And then I've got like a folding lawn chair from outside. Oh, I mean, you were on the ground last week, but no, I can only imagine being, I would just having to not be at home every week and moving your stuff around. I would, I would be physically exhausted. So good for you. You're, you're, you're bright eyed and happy and cheery as ever. So, uh, good for you. Good for you. Indeed. Uh, should we jump right into news? There's so much news this week and an incredible amount of news this week. I mean, at least with announcements, I don't know, uh, if you guys, are, how, how much you guys are excited about it, but let's, let's jump right into it. Shall we? Wait, there was news. A little bit, a little bit here and there. I mean, you said you said so much, <laughs> and now it's just a little bit. What is it, Vonlin? <laughs> Make up your mind. Well, it's a lot of I news. Mean, it's a it's, it's a, a good amount of it's it, a good amount of stuff. It's, to go it's a lot today. of news if you're a console player, but I mean, it's a little bit of news if you're a PC the player. Biggest, the biggest news this week is they got the correct update time slot. I know they for Cy Park. Cy Park actually changed at the correct time this time Be they did it <laughs> they finally did it and because we switched to monday nights we haven't actually even covered the reset last week that was late we didn't we did the episode the day before where they had the second issue so i'm sure most people know about it for those that don't know the side park that they reset um on august 3rd was eight hours earlier than it was supposed to be and it was so it was, the first, the week before, was four hours earlier, and then they moved another four hours earlier instead of four hours. They're eight hours later than it should have been. But that week, it was, uh, it was a, a, the non Luma week with Platypet and Genki. No Luma odds, just minimum SVs. Um, tell more hacks in the free town. This is a week old news at this point. After this, we won't have to cover two side parks ever again. But this one week, this one show, we have to talk about. It. Did you guys do any side? Did you guys catch any Genkis or Platypets in that week before? <laughs> I I I did catch a Genki. It was not in Side Park though. Um, I was I was doing some TV training on my alt account because I reset it, and I was getting some attack TVs. And boom, Luma Genki outside of Side Park. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah, that was gorgeous. That's I, stab worthy. I, that is. That I is I don't know if I should worthy. should should state its name on on stream. Is it not PG thirteen <laughs> appropriate? Or I what? mean. 
It's 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 B U U space B E E. Oh, I get it. I get it. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice. Is that because that's guys wonder B? B. I'm curious, were you were you TV training at a Genki spot or just moving between spots and ran into a Genki and a patch of grass? No, I was I was TV training attack on Genkis, like oh. I stated. Okay, I just I don't think I don't I've never TV trained on uh, attack on Genkis before. So well, that's because I'm on the first island. I reset my account. <laughs> oh, is this for is this for a, a Nuzlocke playthrough? No, no, I just reset my alt account because I couldn't stand its stupid stance. <laughs> the stupid, the stupid bro stance, the aggressive "come at me, bro" stance. The yeah, I really wish I would have picked cute for my main character, but oh, I'm not I, resetting at this point. I did. I reset for the cute. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know which one I picked out of them. I probably have the bro stance. I don't even know which one I have. Knowing you, yeah, I think I think I did. But the the more recent, no, the I didn't know the victory screens that they implemented for competitive battles. Um, change the victory screens change depending on your character's stance. Uh, oh, that you pick. That's cool. Yeah, so. I thought everybody had like the pointing at the camera with the pins around the finger, yeah. but it's dependent upon your three stances. So I'll have to pay attention to that more and look at spot for the other ones. But the the more recent side park that just happened uh, yesterday slash early this morning, depending on, on where you're from, they finally got it right. Oh, I forgot to mention before I before I breeze right past that, there was uh, just a, a quick. There was a, a tweet about the late Sci Park, and Itsuki also posted on Reddit in, in reply to a thread about it, saying, uh, "Before this gains traction, we are looking to why the fix from last week didn't work this time. We're truly sorry. The reset should indeed should indeed be at 4 a.m. ETD. So that is when the reset finally happened this weekend. The third try was the t- uh, the charm forum, and then it is a Luma week. Luma Pigapack and Luma Kalazu, three time odds, 100 percent spawn. So the the easiest rates you get." You get 11 side cards out of 2,800 pan suns. The free time society is from 50 to 415, um, with two telemore hacks at the top for HP uh, being the, the the top reward. So uh, a pretty uh, good week for free time. Well, are you? Do you guys got plans to Luma hunt and pick a pack or Kalazoo this week? I'm looking for some blue bacon right now. I do not like green egg and eggs and ham, but I do like blue <laughs> eggs and ham. <laughs> Yeah, for me, I don't have any uh, plans to Luma Hunt for a uh, pick a pack. The, the weirdest thing I was thinking about doing with pick a pack, I was thinking about getting a Luma Friendship pig for like super duper cheap because people sell them for cheap once they run out of fur and making a uh, weird Doom comp with it, uh, an extinction. And then Huron Crane, just out of the blue, shout out to Huron Crane, leader of the uh, Enigma Club, just traded me a friendship pig like no prompting no idea that i was going to do this he's like hey i've got this extra perfect friendship pig do you want it and i was like sure <laughs> so uh that just kind of nullified all of my plans to go into side park this week here on crane what a boss i i can't decide if i want to get a second i already have a luma kalazoo but it's my favorite temp so i feel like i should get a second one but i don't i don't but, know what the but point you of don't have be. a Kalazoo anymore. You have a Calabens now. Yeah, you think I should you get one of each? Should I do one of each for the, the theoretical living Luma Tempedia? I'll never complete a living Tempedia. You'll Tempedia-o. never complete yeah. it, but you should at least have. Oh, I mean, it's it's right there. It's, it's it is it's pretty far. easy odds. You forget. could use it to breed uh, Hoochick eggs. So, oh yeah. That. And it's I mean, it's pretty easy odds to get one. So I'll definitely give it a shot. But I don't have the Luma Pigapex. So I, I almost feel like I should go for the Luma Pigapex instead. But um, <laughs> pretty we'll easy see. odds. <laughs> I mean, as far as Luma odds go, right? It's the easiest odds you can get. I mean, I I know plenty of people that have not gotten a single Luma in X3 weeks. So keep that in mind, folks. Manage your expectations always. But but if you are someone that doesn't want to get debated into the like 40% times two Luma odds, you're like, I'm only looking for those easier. The ones this is the week that, that you have the best chance. But yeah, you could still get disappointed for sure. Yeah, for sure. So, just so just manage your expectations, that's all I'm saying. Is yeah. it's very possible the best to do like twenty thousand encounters the whole week and still not get one. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've seen it happen. The 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 more exciting news that I was talking about now that we've gone through the side park is they released 
Uh, I think they now. I don't know if they announced first the PS5 thing and then the other consoles, but I saw the PS5 one first. But there was a ton of media coverage about Temtem due to this, which was kind of interesting to see for the first time. Having done this podcast every week for like four or five months and not seen Temtem on like these gaming websites, IGN and GameSpot, and then to see all these uh, articles and interviews all of a sudden. But they did confirm. Wow. Yeah, go ahead. There, there was news when the game first launched. And right. there's all these stupid news articles <laughs> going on with the clickbait titles. The West's Pokemon Killer, blah, blah. Everybody, check this out. Like, stop it, people. Yeah, but this is the this is like the first coverage that they've gotten since then, though, is my point. So it's, it's, it's well, nice to see. Well, obviously, I know yeah. that. I'm just um, saying. But they, there's, a, uh, there's another, like, little... YouTube channel I listen to, I think it's called um, MMO Hut, uh, which puts out, you know, weekly news about MMOs. And they've actually been really good about covering Tim Tim updates. Oh, uh, cool. Not, yeah, they don't do like every single thing like we do, but the patches are just like a well, new patch for I mean, Tim Tim this week. There's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of YouTube videos about everything that happens in Tim Tim, but to actually see like one of these mainstream media websites is that's, that's the abnormal things that I'm pointing out. A lot. Yeah. The liberal media doesn't want Tim Tim to succeed. <laughs> I'm kidding. So, so GameSpot had a, a quote, well, just to confirm, just in case anyone missed it, they, they did say it's, it's coming to, it's all, it's the next gen. Um, so PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and Nintendo Switch in 2021. The quote unquote controversial part of that is that they are not going to come to the current gen, which we'll get to in a second because there's some info about that on their Kickstarter. Uh, but before we do, I just wanted to, I wanted to hit on these quotes from uh, uh, these these uh, media sites. They said it. They sat down with game director Guillermo Andre Andres. I, I'm guessing that's Yah, right? That's just Yah's actual name. We all know him by Yah. Or do you think this is someone else? I'm uh, pretty sure Yaw's the game director. Right? So, that's yeah, what that, I'm thinking. That's, yeah. that's likely Yaw's full name. It's just, it was just weird to see him not and refer to as Yaw. Probably <laughs> Guillermo. Um, We've sat, we sat down that. with Tim Tim's resident <laughs> troll clown. <laughs> Um, he said, we're, we're incredibly excited about Temtem's success. Back when we started thinking about developing Temtem, we were nervous about how players would receive it. We know that the, we knew that the game would have always longed for, or we know that people, excuse me, have always longed for a new and more modern take on the creature collection genre. But we, of course, questioned whether or not we had the right approach. And then he goes on to say, while Temtem is not a technical beast, we're looking forward to make, maxing out our engine and seeing Temtem at its full visual capacity. We're also really looking forward to the new gameplay-related features and possibilities the next generation of hardware brings, such as haptic feedback. I don't know what haptic feedback is. Do, do either of you? You don't know what the vibration in the controller is? Is that what yeah, haptic I was feedback say, is called? I think, like, do you know I when your phone vibrates when you touch something that. or yeah. get a text? Well, listen, PC yeah. Master Race, I don't ever use controllers. Or whenever you, have you ever texted on your phone? You know that that feeling when you press yeah. a, a button on the keyboard when you're sure, typing sure. and it, it vibrates? Haptic um, feedback. And then he also also interviewed with IGN as well, like I said. And, and with them, he got kind of the same quote. It was a little bit different. He just said, um, as we look forward and as we expand our plans for the future of Temtem, we knew we had to embrace the next gen. Sony's been very receptive and helpful with us in this decision. So the PS5 is the perfect fit to start our journey. Um, so just uh, interesting, nice to get some quotes from him directly to professional media outlets. I think we all see Yah in a semi-less, more playful, less professional, fun way. But seeing him out in the media uh, trying to build up brand and hype for, for Temtem was really exciting to see. I want to uh, take a second to emphasize that first section of that that sentence there. As we look forward and as we expand our plans for the future of Temtem, we knew we had to embrace the next gen. They're expanding their plans for the future of Temtem. <laughs> so they're they're going to continue. So it's not just they are like they have ideas for what to come after the game is finished it sounds like sounds like they're they're looking to the next step to see what they could continue to add to the game once it's completely developed yeah, yeah i believe we got um slight things talking about after tim tim launched into early access that mm -hmm. since the launch they've over doubled their staff and this game, you know, made millions, millions of dollars on um, on launch of just selling copies of the game. 
of funding in their pocket. So it's kind of probably just enabled them to be at this state where they can think forward of just like, look, we were working with Kickstarter on, you know, who was willing to help out, but look at all of this now, like this is a viable product that we have. The thing that I think I was most excited about when I saw these launches or rather these announcements for it's coming to PS5 and Xbox was that I, I think initially, um, I think initially, I I only thought Tim Tim was coming to the Nintendo Switch in PC release, and the fact that it's going to be like on every console as a MMO that's you know potentially cross platform was ridiculously cool to me and reminding me how big Krima's plans are for this game and how much like like just the amount of people we're going to have to be able to like play with and the access. To the game i think that's ridiculously cool and i think one of the things that makes fortnite so successful as a game is not the development of fortnite but the accessibility of fortnite that anybody oh, yeah. you know can get it and tim tim is like the coolest product ever because not only is it going to be incredibly accessible that you can get it on discord you know steam whatever console you're on but it's also ridiculously well developed as far as like the amount of polish they put into the systems that they implement into the game so yeah it's just a both worlds i'm i'm honestly curious though so they're they're they've dropped support for playstation 4 and xbox one um but they had didn't drop. I mean, I understand why they didn't drop support for Switch. But if we're talking about looking forward to the next gen and being able to being able to you know max out their engine, the Nintendo Switch is the most underpowered system that there is available. Yes, I mean, it's a console, but as far as performance goes, it's not nearly as powerful as an Xbox One find, or a PlayStation. I don't follow 4. Nintendo enough, but has Nintendo announced a next gen? beyond no. switch i mean that's no. that's that's why then it's they're just doing it on the most current gen of each console so they want well, to bring it to nintendo well obviously i'm just saying because they're talking about moving to the next gen because Not being of limited the performance. By the, yeah right but the p but the nintendo switch is the most limiting of all hardware that they're that they're currently I mean, is like they're you just yeah. can't do no that's that's a good point but i can speculate why and it's just because i mean pokemon is a nintendo game so they're just i'm guessing they're they know there's a huge market that they're, they're not willing to give up by not going there's, out of the switch well yeah but no, there's going to be some difficulties I I, with, with with the switch i mean i know they're not going to give up the switch because it's a huge like m- so many people on the switch it's one of the top selling consoles right at all um but like one of the issues they're going to have is the connectivity so people like have their switches portable a lot and a lot of times they're not near an internet connection right. so It'll there's be, gonna be right. so many complaints about the no why offline the game mode offline. why can't i play offline this is stupid one star <laughs> i can't play this when i'm away like it's 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 gonna be a nightmare yeah, hopefully people appreciate that it's an, an MMO online only game. But yeah, I can see that coming up. I mean, there's got to be there's other online MMO style games that, that people play on the Switch, right? Well, so I yeah, I mean, precedent. obviously, but this is different. You know, this isn't like something like Fortnite or um, right. you know all these MOBAs that people play online. There is a like, single you know, player aspect to it that people are going to want to be able to do. This is more like a creature collecting game that yes, people yeah. would normally play single player. Yeah. So. I think that's what you got to give up for taking that step on that modern version of a Pokemon game. It being an MMO online is that you're, you're never going to be able to play it online only. That's part of part of the evolution. Hopefully, people understand it. But yeah, I know you'll definitely there'll be some there'll be some Reddit threads at the very least uh, complaining about it. Um, with that said, they, I just wanted to point out the very end of the Kickstarter page talking about this all in a lot more detail. Um, where they said, I'm a PS4, Xbox One backer. What are my options? And of course, they, you know, they're doing the right thing. They're offering backers to uh, the option to upgrade to either PS5 or Xbox Series X without any additional cost or, get, uh, or to get a refund completely if they really want it. Um, so that's nice. Even if, if, you, if you bought like the PS4 and for some reason you're, you're not going to get the PS5 and you want to get the next gen of the Xbox, you can actually switch and upgrade to that for free. Um, they, and this is very specifically at the, port, at the end, this is important to highlight. Whether you want to change your platform or you want to refund, write them at support at cremagames.com. Um, the last little bit of like what I pulled out of the news, unless you guys have more stuff to throw in it, but is uh, I saw on Reddit... Someone was saying, you know, nothing about cross-platform, cross-play, cross-saves was said. 
um, in all of these announcements. And Itsuki did reply to that comment saying, we cannot share anything on this yet, but we'll keep everyone informed as soon as we can. So um, it's, 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 it is a good point worth mentioning. There was no confirmation in this yet of cross-play or cross-saves. Um, I think we're all hoping for cross-play at the very least, if not cross-saves, which they said would yeah. be a little bit uh, higher of a goal, but something they wanted to do if they could. So... Yeah, usually PlayStation's the the biggest thorn in developers' sides as far as it comes to crossplay. Um, like recently, PlayStation's come out and been like, "Oh, it's it's on the developers to to enable that." Like we totally support it, and then developers like, "No, th- this is not something that they actually support very well. They yeah. they it's very hard to implement and work with them to get this functionality enabled." Um, like it just like destiny Two when they switched to because they had some like playstation exclusives and stuff like that they were waiting for those to run out but they switched to making um being able to do like you could move cross save enabled and stuff like that and um they were looking at cross play and they just yeah well i I don't know if it's if it's being overly optimistic and and it was a it was a public facing comment so of course y'all is going to say nice things but y'all did specifically say in his quote with ign that Sony has been very receptive and helpful with us in this decision, referring to the PS5 change. So hopefully that indicates a good relationship with Sony and that they'll, they'll get what they need out of them if that's something they end up wanting to pursue. But I'm sure there's a lot of <laughs> a lot going on in the background about it. So Hopefully that doesn't mean exclusive content just for the PS5. Yeah. You can only get these cosmetic items or this Temtem if you're on the PS5 because they like to do that stuff. And yeah. it's infuriating. Let's just in case Krema, think, if you listen, yeah, don't do that stuff. I was just don't. gonna say, don't give like, a, a Luma exclusive to people that buy it on a certain console. Everyone's I'm sure rage. it would just be cosmetics, if anything, but don't do it. Don't do it, Crema. <laughs> like, I understand, you know, the desire for, for support from, from PS5 and maybe getting a little extra help with development or funds like that, but don't. Please stop. <laughs> it's not worth the social cap- capital you'll be spending. <laughs> I'll buy a PS5 for a hat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, you guys got anything else on all of the console announcements? Otherwise, I, the other thing in the news I wanted to cover was the two patches uh, quickly. But I'll, I'll pause. I'm going to be talking a whole bunch later in this episode, so I'm set. <laughs> okay. Well, I, Wait, I, can I, I be talking a whole bunch? I know that, Kennedy, <laughs> you're, you'll be a little... You'll be interested at least in so there's, there's patch 6.4 patch 6.5 both of them have a bunch of fixes as usual i'm not going to read through them all um i didn't see anything specifically that i even wanted to call out from the fixes the one thing that was the most interesting is in in 0.6.4 the changes with the guys um there's a lot of tweets about this early in the week about how people are saying that they just don't like deceit aura uh mm-hmm. when uh, as a PVE tem, which totally I agree with. It's a, it was kind of a pain in the it butt. It makes makes sense yeah. because they're just not TV trained. So to the odds that your Nagains is going to have worse like speed. I mean, it well, depends. and the rest so of your team it, as well. Yeah, like it's just it's not going to happen. So, so it just makes no no sense. So it, so what we're talking about is what they changed is they made it so all of those starter Nagaises and 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 Tentals and Hochicks now have the other line of traits by default. And if you can still get Deceit Aura for PvP, you just get it as the bread trait um, when you start yeah. breeding them. So a very nice change for them to make. I, I was a little nervous when I first saw them the tweets about this because I thought it was them changing how to, well, they were going to change Deceit Aura or get rid of it completely or something. So I was mm-hmm. a little nervous. I'm like, no, I really like how crazy and different it is. I know Kennedy especially was like super excited about it. So I'm glad they just reversed which trait order you get and you can still get that fun trait if you want to build a team around it. So... A lot of people were still upset about that, though. I saw a couple of comments where they were really? just like, yeah, they're like, oh, great. Thanks for making my Nagai's useless. Now I have to now. Now I have no Nagai's. And I'm like, if you're using the starter Tem, you can simply just take 50 Pan Suns and breed it with any random Tem Tem and get random garbage stats. And bam, you've got yourself a Nagai's. I mean, yeah. it was. It was really interesting watching the fallout from that tweet because a lot of people are from that change. A lot of people were, you know, right, rightfully upset that a PvP trait was on, you know, the starting Tim Tim rather than being its off ability. Yeah. And then a lot of people were really upset that their free, you know, high value Tim 
just got changed. But for the overall the overall health of the game in the long run, you want Water Custodian to be the regular trait, just because you don't want you know people running around maxing out the speed on their hoe chicks and their tentals and you know Avenger raising the speed and everything is like okay yeah this is what I need for this to be like a good ten and then it's just like and surprise. Um, speed is a bad stat on the guys. And it's just like, but why? <laughs> and, you know, not really having a fundamental understanding of the game yet. So I, I, overall, it really, really sucks, but I think this is for the health of the game. It's kind yeah. of like the Telomere hat changes. It's but not, I don't it's think not it nearly as controversial as that. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't think it bites <laughs> as hard as those does. It's of just like, it sucks that this happened, but it needed to happen this early in the game's life. Um, out of those patches, too, something I wanted to shout out of uh, Q&A Angel commented on our episode from last week. Uh, I spread some false information. I said Earthbreaker was Bud. Earthbreaker as a, an ability, which is a three-hold move. We said this um, last week. We clarified this. No, we didn't clarify it last week. Yeah, we did. Uh, we, didn't have a, we didn't have a podcast last week. No, the yeah, last, the we- last episode. Because Q and no, that's no, why no, he said it. You, he was clarifying. You clarified something else that Q and A Angel said. He wait. corrects all of our videos. Oh wait, what, what did you say wrong? I guess I thought you were about to say the same thing. Earthbreaker. Yeah. Earthbreaker as a as a technique. I um, it is not bug. Uh, Earthbreaker is actually supposed to hit one target, um, and then it's supposed to uh, deal its damage to one target. It's the uh, the description of it that's actually was a typo so they fixed the description uh, that's right patch. you know what I'm, I'm thinking of i talked about this in discord with you but that's right this did happen in between the shows that's right we've had two weeks in a row of q angel correction <laughs> so i wonder what it will yeah. be this week <laughs> you threw off my train of thought i was no, just I'm like, sorry i, don't think I was like i there. definitely <laughs> talked to kennedy about this but it was just me and you privately talking about it, not with everyone else no you're right now I'm yeah. trying, what was the other thing that q angel now i got i'm trying to quickly find the comment what else did we do uh, uh, I don't know, but God bless Q and A Angel. He's a uh, Q and A Angel. <laughs> I'm just I'm quickly going through comments. Anyway, sorry, I, I won't go digging for that. Um, yeah, so that's the patch notes, and that's the news. So uh, let's let's move right along, shall we? Wait, we didn't cover patch note point six five, where they fixed the stretchy hair glitch. I sent you a beautiful <laughs> picture of the stretchy hair glitch. This dude had the most longest and powerful like just pompadour i've ever seen in my entire life it's stretched so far across the map it's incredible <laughs> like there were just people that were just like getting getting their hair stuck and it just would stretch like the entire run of the map it was it was amazing i nice. love bug fixes it just makes the game so <laughs> much more pleasant um, I'm just seeing if there's any. No, there's not really any. I mean, I don't know any other fixes that you guys really liked out of 6.5 or the the stretched hair. That's that's too funny. Um, there was a bench. I mean, really, just a, oh my! There was a bench that, that if you thing. sat down on it, you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to get up again. That's hilarious. I'm glad I didn't sit the, on that bench. <laughs> the fixing players' portraits not being rendered in the interact screen. That's always nice. Yeah. Um, fixed appearing in midair or bur- buried yeah. in the ground when crossing a gate. Why? That's not fair. That's not fun. I like that. <laughs> I just like watching I just like walking into Windward Fort and seeing people buried in the ground. My <laughs> my favorite bug was when you got off the airship and your Tem just took a nose dive off the gangplank and like jumped off into the down below every time. Yeah, that was that I was missed, that I was that pretty bug. good. I yeah. missed that bug. Bye. Um no, let's, we'll go right into hi- highlights from the community. We don't have any listener questions. As always, just a quick reminder, feel free to email us at temptalkshow at gmail.com and we'll read your question on the air and, uh, and, and share our thoughts on it. But from the, the community can, highlights, yeah, go ahead, Kennedy. Can I uh, jump in on the listener questions? We don't yeah. have any listener questions this week, but Shintigami just sent me something interesting from the um, official PlayStation, uh, our blog, PlayStation blog talking about Temtem. It has a weird sentence right at the end, and I'm wondering how much of this information came from Chroma just telling them you what should, to write. You should uh, put, uh, the, put the link in Twitch chat, and I'll pull it up. Oh, it's probably Okay, not. I'll send it to you as a Discord message. I, I, won't, I can't get um, Discord messages when I'm broadcasting. Oh, okay, cool. I will put it in the notes document. Uh, anyways, 
the last sentence of it, I'll put it in the bottom of the thing. Last sentence of it talks about uh, the weekly quests of just like weekly quests that can reward you. Or the wording of it says reward and the chances of rare tins. So that's like interesting because we kind of speculated that, you know, maybe weeklies would give you like a chance of a Luma for like a, an increased Luma chance for maybe like a certain amount of time. So I'm wondering how much of this is speculation and how much of this is just copy pasta from like a press. Where, uh, which, which bold, bold title point is this? And I'm just trying to quickly go through. I got pulled up here. I want to find this line. Um, uh, let's see. Online world. Scroll up and look at the last sentence uh, of online, online world. world. Uh, the online world yeah. is full of possibilities. Players can join a club, fight for control of a club, or just complete weekly quests for rewards and chances for rare times. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, no, they're talking about just the end game content. I mean, that's always been on the roadmap, right? Yeah. Can't, well, yeah, and I was just saying one shout out that that was sent. Can't wait uh, to, you know, see more concrete stuff on this. Because we've gotten uh, so many things this week of just like yeah this is just stuff in the air that we are thinking about and working towards but like nothing yep. kind of like concrete on it, so. this this article's got all the kisawa hype uh media because it's got like the starters where their their evolved forms are still like in shadow that they posted on twitter beforehand and the, the club banners and the chat features this is so it's like literally a bunch of media they pulled off their twitter please. pulled it right <laughs> off the kit the kisawa update it looks like yeah Oh, yeah. Good old, All right. good old PlayStation. Let's jump into these community highlights. Yeah, so the first thing, I'm, I'm not going to play it, even though I You think... mean community hype lights? <laughs> I, w- <laughs> I probably would be perfectly fine to play this video, but I just I didn't talk to the person that made it, and I always like to try to like get their permission before I sh- am using other people's content. But I'll at least show off the Reddit post. People can go watch it themselves, and if I connect with the person, maybe I'll play it in the next episode. But... Um, this put, uh, there's, again, there's like a decent number of, of YouTube videos that get posted on Temtem and not to take anything away from any of those. This one is, I, I like because it is very different from all the other ones. And, and like literally the first comment sums it up perfectly. Someone says, geez, this is quality content. And it's called, thank you for the green screen crema. And it's just like a music video with some very well done editing from Temtem that I thought was really cool and very unique. Um, and just really differentiated from all the other YouTube content going out there. So I wanted to give them a shout out to, again, Discord is the person that posted it. Um, I'm gonna, let me pull up on YouTube. I'm not gonna play it on YouTube, but I'm gonna see what channel it's under. Yeah, they're called Discord on YouTube as well, so go check them out. So, um, Kennedy, you gotta tell me more about this other selection that you put in there uh, for this Ooh, section. okay. Pull it, this is juicy. Pull this up on stream yep, and I got it we up. will get into it. So anybody, so I didn't have a chance to look at this, so I'm going to be like just like a listener hearing it for the first time. I'm pulling okay. a Gaijin boo. So anybody, yeah, uh, anybody who plays competitive Temtem, when you queue into a competitive game, there are two sides: blue side and gold side. Uh, to try and make the pick and ban phase fair, Krima has given each side different advantages because obviously, if you get first pick. Um, and you know first ban uh and then the other person just gets to counter all your picks uh it's not fair so there are things implemented into pick and ban phase to try and make it fair uh right now in competitive temptims um and in the current metagame at the highest level of play all of the advantages that blue side gets are actually detriments and it's really 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 unfavorable to play a game from blue side. So if you queue into a game and you're blue side, automatically your gold side opponent has um, an advantage over you if the gold side player knows how to abuse and yeah. get full mile. If I can, man. I want to cut in right right then and summarize Karth's three points here. Because I've always known that, that blue orange is, or orange is better, but he really summarizes it very concisely here about where there's these these three problem areas. Just to get the specific thing that you're talking about. And he's saying the first one is that blue bans first and orange gets the counter ban. And seeing what your opponent bans first gives you an idea of what they want to pick first and allows you to ban out what they're trying to play around. So you get the first counter ban. And then number two, orange gets the counter pick blue side's opening. So blue picks two, their two openers and then orange gets to pick attempt in response on their opener and he says this pick phase is the most important the attempts you pick here are what you must lead with blue has to show both of their picks giving orange ability to pick something that does well into both 
And then finally, three, Orange gets the final counter pick in the draft, so the very last pick. And then he says, similar to the first counter pick, but much lower in power, gets the ability to pick last after seeing the entire lineup that Blue is bringing to the match. So yeah, continue your train of thought there, Ken. I just wanted to just read yeah. directly from the post on, on why Orange side is so much better. So this is um, something that's evident at higher levels of play of once you get about over 1600 TMR or 1500 TMR is where you really start to see players who are able to get the full mileage out of this and really leverage the pick and ban system to enter games with that extra leg above other players. And so the community came together um, and supported Karth on this post and Karth was the figurehead leading this post and of creating it and leading the discussion on it, that at higher levels of play, the pick and ban phase is unfair, is the basic um, summation of this post. Uh, he watched the Crystal Cup uh, by Plus OP, who threw it this past weekend, and took note of all of the bracket games of who won uh, the games and which side uh, did they play from. And they uh, the overall percentage was that blue was favored to win 55% of the time, whereas or orange was favored to win 55% of the time, where blue was um, favored to win 45% of the time, which meant if you play on blue side, you're less likely to win. Uh, one of the reasons that this is really important is because um, Tim Tim is the whole competitive part of Tim Tim is balanced around are you better than your opponent with limiting as much RNG as possible? Is your decision making and your team building, you know, did the strategy you bring overcome your opponent? So this is kind of one of the few RNG elements inside of Tim Tim of did you get gold or blue? And that has a huge sway on if you can win or not win a game. So with that, Krima has always said that the pick and ban phase is balanced from the statistics that they have. But for the first time um, in the Kiswa patch was the first time that they were able to track wins and losses against dif or throughout different tiers of MMR. And they've always stated that it's perfectly balanced from their numbers, which is balanced for most of the game. But they saw a huge skew of uh, different um, information at higher levels of play that goes into what Karth and other players have consistently said that, you know, this part of the game doesn't feel good at this level. And Yaw has openly admitted, like, they weren't 100% certain on when they implemented the pick and ban phase because something like this in a game like this hasn't really ever been done before. So I really like what pick and ban brings to a competitive monster battling game like this. And I admit it is fantastic to have a tool like this but it just needs a little bit of tweaking until it's like absolutely perfect. And so there are suggestions in this post, which I highly suggest everybody, you know, go to the official forums and read. Um, Yaw has said that they want to change pick and ban. Um, they knew pick and ban might not work and they implemented a system where they can change it on the fly without having to implement patches that change the whole client. So they, in the future, they're planning to implement different test phases and see the results of those phases before they decide on how to proceed forward with this. And y'all said, please use this thread for any suggestions that you have on how to balance pick and ban phase. But the one thing to keep in mind is it needs to be balanced for a high level of play, but it also needs to be balanced for a low level of play. So right now, majority of players don't notice the issues with pick and ban phase. But when you get into, you know, the top, top ranks, that's when it kind of becomes egregious, e egregious of just like, oh, my God, I'm blue side. All right, let's go. <laughs> and I'm just looking at Yaw's post right now in that thread. And he says that, yeah, they even they see the difference, of it's, but it's still less than 5%. But that's kind of right what Karth had in his own sample size. And even Karth, Karth even openly admits that it's a very small sample size and doesn't tell the full story. But he thinks that the the discrepancy in this is 100% due to the picks, which is, is interesting. Real quick, his solutions were basically to change either the colors in the second phase of the picks and let blue counterpick the openers, or by or the other switch is to just switch who has the opening ban and the counter ban. Um, and then, and yeah, like you said, invites yeah. everyone in that thread to post other ideas as well. So well, that's really interesting. Can I give some advice for the people playing on ladder who are listening? 
No, you're not allowed to donate um, there, voice out. We don't we don't do that here. <laughs> People were discussing um, how to take full advantage of the pick and ban system. Um, and one player talked about how at lower levels it's you know almost impossible to lose on gold side if you know how to do it. And I want to share this with everybody because I played a couple ranked games today and it actually really, really helped me um, every time I got gold. So gold gets a counter pick and then they also get a first ban um, going in, or they get a counter pick for the first part of the game and then they get first ban on the second part of the game. So what you do is you pick a safe 10 for your number one 10 uh, and then whatever your opponent brings, you counter pick the um you counter pick their field for what they have so that you force the swap out um to happen and then you don't counter pick the biggest threat on their or you don't ban the biggest threat on their team you ban the safest swap into your opener um and then so what happens is the person mm. you pick a strategy that forces them to swap then you ban yeah. the safest swap they can do yeah. so that whatever oh, i like that first, that's 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 a nice damage. way to deal with it that's smart. Uh, and that's one of the ways you can abuse pick and ban right now. And uh, I got some easy, cheap wins off of just throwing people oh, off. So, so what game. we're doing now is we're we're advising our users to abuse a system that that it's, that has, has, has shown advantage to, to a specific side. Real no, nice. It's, Go it's ahead, not, everybody. It's abuse, not abuse the game. As, it's not abuse <laughs> as in a bug. It's that this is how it currently works. And if you want to get the full mileage, like if you want to climb ladder, you know, your gold does have an advantage. And I feel like, you know, telling people not to take full use of that advantage that's not game breaking is like telling people just like, oh, yeah, you know, right now, Gaialis has like the highest, uh, not currently, but, you know, last patch has like the highest um effective stats that it can use and the ability to heat up and nothing can kill it on turn one um and you can heat up and outspeed everything on turn two and essentially knock out a 10 you shouldn't put it on your team and it's like no exactly. you definitely put that on your team and you definitely go ham on some people's faces because it was balanced <laughs> or it was you know designed and intended like this it's not abusing a bug it's you know game mechanics that aren't Holy balance right now. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. And I mean, and that's access. gonna happen with an early access game. Like, it's it, it's a learning experience, um, especially with something like that, the pick and ban. Like, like they said, it's not something that's really been done before. But I'm curious, why why not just go, you know, one person, the next person, one person, next person, one person, next person. Like, why? I I I mean, I don't know enough about this system, but like, it just seems well, weird. You need to snake it like they do because let's say it's one person and then one person. So let's say, you know, same thing. Blue side gets first ban, right? So okay. blue side is running a toxic team. They see a win Tim on the other team. They ban a win Tim. And then uh, the gold side's going to know, like, oh, they're trying to get their toxic strategy off if they have like three toxic Tims. Let me ban the hardest one of those toxic tins to deal with. And then if they ban, you know, enough of your strategy or it's like their team answers enough of your other tins that you don't want to run all of your toxics, it's kind of SOL now that you just spent your ban setting up this one part of the strategy on your team. Like teams should have multiple strategies to go for, but blue side has to project their strategy and first. It's so not, now we have... And it's not uncommon to see this system running. like this. Yeah, let me finish this real quick too so we don't get lost in it. So blue side has banned, gold side has countered their ban. Blue side then picks their first Tim, which let's say now they don't want to go with toxic, they pick a water Tim. And gold side's going to say, well, you pick that Tim. This Tim is great into that. I'm going to pick this. Then okay. blue side has to pick another Tim. And then gold side gets to pick after them. So if you just do that and that, and or if you just do one player, then the next player, one player, then the next player, Whatever player moves second counters the whole strategy of just like you do your thing and then I'm going to pick right. the best answer. And you well, pick. That's all I was just going to add to that is you see it's actually a pretty good example, though it's, it's not directly the same, but a lot of MOBAs have five player teams and pick and there. So it's the same as five Thames 
And they do the same thing with their picks and drafts, where it's not just every other, but there's points in the picks where your team picks two, then they pick one, and then you pick one, and then they pick two. It's a little different in each of the games, but it's Temtem's certainly not the first thing to design the pick and ban system to, to be like Kennedy's kind of describing. So, uh, by the way, real quick, I, I found the comment. Q Angel also corrected us on the on the, the two episodes ago. It was the Hocus spot. We thought that's why the people were getting uh, accidentally banned. <laughs> Was yeah. for catching Hocus. Yeah. Yeah. It was for the. It was for items. That was the other comment. That would have bothered me if I didn't figure that out eventually. Can I just say real quick? I fought a Hocus on ladder for the first time today, and I hit it with an aquatic whirlwind from a um, Ukama with two hundred and forty special attack mm-hmm. uh, TVs, and that thing crumpled. <laughs> Did you one shot like, it? <laughs> no, no. I oh. brought it down to red HP, but I was nice. just like, that is not a uh, sturdy ten. It's just it, it's a glass cannon. It's just it's yeah, not, I have no not idea. tanky. Like it's one of those temtem where it can be useful, but you have to be able to put it in at the right time. It it, it requires a decent amount of setup to pull off, but it's not going to last very long. I'm I'm <laughs> curious. Did you see yeah. a hocus or was it a pocus at least? Oh, hocus, hocus, hocus. Okay. I'm sorry. I figure. I just want to make sure. I'll be, that'd be really weird. Um. Well, hey, let's move on to the next thing we got here, which is our. Uh, what have we been up to this week? Sorry, I forgot I lost myself in there. Um, Kennedy, <laughs> I think you, you you wrote stuff in here first. So I'm just going to open it straight up to you. Uh, you want to talk about so, your, your Crystal Cup? <laughs> yes, Plus OP ran the Crystal cup, cup this past weekend. It was a $500 tournament with a million pan sums on the line. So the top um, five places got money, and then I believe... Or no, the top eight got money, and then the top sixteen got uh, pansons. And it was so well. The top eight got money and pansons, and it was so much fun. That's, there were like that's, 60... I'm curious. Does he pay the five dollars out of pocket, or does he have someone like donating money? Um, I believe Where does money it was, come from. I believe it was sponsored or raised. Um, I forgot. Okay. Uh, okay. I, yeah, I forgot, but I think it was in the tournament description there. Okay. But I'll take a it look was, and find it. It was. We'll cover it when we do our tournament section because it's in the next part. It's so. It was so much fun. Um, I was on edge about competing, and my partner actually convinced me to enter into it because I like. I I know I'm pretty decent at this game, but I just didn't feel like I had all of the fire to take down, you know, all of the people that were going to be entering such a big tournament. And she actually, like, ed- edging me on was like, come on, you got this, you got this. I was like, all right. Edge you or threaten um, you with one of the many <laughs> sharp <yeah>. objects. <laughs> exactly. So um, I competed, and I actually got hideously unlucky. Like, I, I'm, open, I'm open to admit I'm not the best Tim Tim player, but... Um, my opening game was against Alola, who, like, if you follow competitive Tintin, Alola is freaking amazing at this game. And they actually got into brackets to into the final parts of the tournament where Subaki Chan finally knocked them out. Um, another match I had was against Prodi. And then another match I had is against um, fellow Tintin podcaster uh, Spectra, Wait. who. Prody is it is it Prody like the the number one highest TMR player? Uh, I don't think so. Um, I'm I, I think Prody's TMR is like fourteen hundred or so, but I don't know if they troll on their main account or something. Oh, maybe uh, maybe I read it wrong. I saw something about the the list. I, I, yeah, I could be wrong, but um, yeah, it, in Spectra, I know Spectra is at like sixteen hundred TMR, and so it was a hell of a like not not hell is like oh man that's one hell of a thing like no it was hell in my, in my brackets. I'm, I'm looking at every... I have the brackets pulled right now. I'm looking at it. Yeah, how you fight Alola in the first round. I fought every game down to the last Tim Tim in the last turn, and I there was. Alola was the only one who wiped the floor with me, who had like three Temtems to, you know, my one when the game was over. Uh, but other than that, like I took every game down to the wire and just barely lost those. The one that I think was the funniest to me, um, Spectre uh, has the Tim Tim Up podcast with Atacar. And I chat right before we went into the game, I was just like, wager, right now, Spectra, if... <laughs> 
uh, Loser has to guest star on the other one's podcast because I wanted to bring him on Tim Talk and brag that I took him down. Um, but it went down to the final turn. We both had, I think we both had Volerins and he had the speed arrow and he hyperconnected my aerobic Volerin and oh. barely won the game. It was so frustrating. You but just, I was just like right there. You just reminded me. I, I saw that in Car's post. I didn't know that until this moment. The speed arrow thing. I didn't even know that was a mechanic until just today. Can you explain that quick for people that don't know about it? Yeah. So one of the advantages that blue side gets, which is not an advantage, is speed arrow. So at the start of the game, there is an arrow underneath each uh, tamer's portrait that switches sides. Um, if, if you are ever equally tied for speed with another Tim Tim that is on the field, um, and your Tim Tims have the first, the same speed, the same priority of move that they're using, the same stages of speed, uh, and it can't determine who goes first. Whoever has the speed arrow is actually going to go first, and then the speed arrow switches sides after it's spent. And it just so stays you, with you until there's a tie. Yeah, right. you hang on to it the whole time until there's a tie, and then it switches sides. And you said it's not uh, the an advantage. Why, oh, yeah, go ahead. No, you're about to say it. Yeah, the reason why it's not an advantage is because all of your good moves on turn one most of the time are on hold. So the speed arrow counts for every move and every action that is happening. So let's say your Tims are tied and you need to swap out. The speed arrow swap or switches. Um, if you're both doing heat up turn one, the speed arrow switches. Uh, if you you know both do like wind blade, the speed arrow switches. And the now on turn two, all of the good moves come off of hold. Right. The other side has speed arrow. The and important point is a lot of those early first turn moves, there's a good chance it's a buff up move, so the speed order is not going to matter if it's so much just increasing attack like heat up or something like that. So. Um. And I was I was almost correct. Brody's number two. Yeah, it, it freaking yeah. Twenty forty exactly. a, a TMR of twenty forty two. I I helped uh, a fellow club member make his team for the uh, tournament Dumaga, and he actually got into the. Uh, I think he Dumaga. got into the brackets um, before he was finally knocked out by another Enigma player. But he just had such, he killed his own Tims by accident. And he had such oh, a no. pleasant, great bracket. Oh, no. um, there was a point where we were in the tournament. We were tied for 14th and 15th place. And only the top 15 moved on to the brackets because um, Subaki won so many um, of Plus's tournaments. He had an auto qualify for the brackets. So the top 15 moved on to the top 16. And then Subaki also got into the top 16. Um, Dumaga and I were fighting for 14th and 15th place. And I was like, I've got this. Like, I'm, you know, just going to secure this spot. And then I played Prodi. And I was like, okay, that's Prodi. It's fine. And then I played Spectra. And I barely lost that game. But it was so much fun. I was like, okay, it doesn't matter. If everybody loses their next match and I win my next match, then I will get in. And I forgot who I fought as, like, my last game. But it was just, oh, it was Prodi as my last game. And I actually lost to Spectra earlier. And I was like, nope, there's no chance I'm getting into the brackets. Or it's just like absolute hell. Um, I was, it, yeah, it I'm, look, I'm looking at it right now. It looks like you, you lost your first round, won your second and third round, and then lost the, the remaining ones. Does that sound right? Yeah. It, it was a lot of fun. And I will be um, I will be competing in more tournaments. Like, I just, it's... It's so crazy the level of players that you fight against and, you know, just to be able to, like, consistently play a, like, a same team and go up against so many people and have to, like, vary on your strategy and being locked into your items and everything. It It's just, I, I learned so much about the Tims that I was using and what to do with them and the different strategies I could pull out from the team I composed. That normally on ladder, I'm just like, man, Musha's been sucking up these last two games. Bye. And then, you know, I have to get something else. It's just like, okay, how can I pull something out of these Tims that I've brought in ways that, you know, haven't been working for me for these past couple of games? And uh, I found some new openers and new stuff on my team that, like, I've actually had a lot of fun playing it on ladder now. Um, but yeah, that, long that's didn't listen. Like, 
competitive. <laughs> I was just say, I, I, I was saying, I'm looking at the time. I want to keep us moving along. So, guys, and what about your week in Temtem? Do anything? You got Luma Gazuma? Is that the, or, or Genki? Is that the yeah. highlight? I mean, th- that that's my highlight in Temtem. Uh, I was just trying to get my alt account through the story. Uh, just, uh, just you know, I was I was. T- T- uh, not TV training, uh, pan sun farming and just TV training on my alt account so I could just go through the story. I mean, I could have pushed myself through with my main account, but I'm like, eh, maybe, maybe I'll just play some. Hmm. But uh, so, yeah, I, I, I haven't been doing a whole heck of a lot, just that and playing some Horizon Zero Dawn and some Sea of Thieves and uh, just that's really about it not nothing too exciting yeah well let's like i said i want to leave time for our, to talk about some of the new kisso attempts so i want to jump right into the community events tournaments and kennedy like you were saying this, you do have a lot to talk about this episode so i'm gonna throw it right back to you for some more competitive talk but i'm gonna get you yeah got like, i'll try and be i'll say you got you got like yeah. five minutes total for all three events so i'm gonna go grab a yeah, refill of drink quick you, you go I'll ahead. be quick about the crystal cup because I just talked about sure. uh, so much of it. Um, we'll see. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Will you? I said you have five minutes <laughs> exactly. I'm looking at the clock, so use your time wisely. You go. keep interrupting me. Go. Uh, also, P um, through the crystal cup. It was a he scheduled it to be friendly to EU players, so it was like it started at six a.m. or seven a.m. in the morning for um, people in the continental U.S. Yeah. Um, and it was like a nine hour tournament. The final winner of the tournament was uh, Totira Bien, who is an Enigma player, shout out to the club, uh, going against Tiki Book. And I would really love to see a rematch between these two players um, because Tiki had one great game against Totira Bien and then Totira oh. Bien kind of like wiped the floor with them for the next two. Tiki, but Tiki Book, yeah, Tiki Book openly admitted like he was dozing off at the keyboard he'd been up you know playing consistently for nine hours you know outside of like his normal time period to play and so i just like it, it kind of wears on you so i i do feel for tiki book there but not to throw any shade at totira bien who played like super exceptional um the whole tournament uh that said we have uh, some upcoming tournaments that are going to be really, really ridiculously cool. The Sapphire series is uh, a tournament series that Blue Sapphire, friend of the show, is throwing. Um, he got a Tim Tim sponsor, and the prize pool for it for this week is up to 200,000 pan suns. Uh, no entry fee, and this is a tournament meant for newer players. Uh, players who want to come and try and experience w- what competitive is like. So uh, there are a set of interesting rules to make the format a little bit more flexible um, and welcoming. The rule that's going to be for this tournament uh, coming up this Tuesday, tomorrow, if you're hearing this now, um, is going to be roster swaps. Uh, during the tournament, you can swap out or you in the best of three series, you can swap out one Tim on your team for another Tim. You can do this up to three times per best of three series that you play. So you can kind of flexibly mold your team to better fit your opponent uh, that you're playing against if you feel like your team doesn't have a good matchup. And it's really, really, really fun. Blue Sapphire throws some great events. So definitely, um, definitely uh, join this tournament. Uh, right now, you can type exclamation point Discord inside of um, inside of the Twitch chat if you're watching live, or exclamation point schedule, and you'll see the information for both of these. Uh, are for the Discord, and in the Discord, you can find the information. For everybody listening live, please are listening to the podcast. Please join the Temporium Discord, and all of this information of where to find these tournaments is inside of that Discord. Uh, the next you can thing type exclamation talk- point Discord in chat if you're currently here, if you want to get a link to that, I think, or below yeah, this bada, stream. Bada bing, bada boom. Uh, let's see. How many new players have a variety of Tims to make swaps work? Yeah, that's the other thing where uh, I do agree with you there, Jarrell. Um, real quick, though, just going to go on to these last couple uh, bullet points. Temporium has started daily tournaments. Um, They are no entry fee. They happen every single day. 
uh, you can join the Temporium Discord and find out, you know, how to enter into these tournaments. The prize pool for winning is 25,000 uh, Pansons, and it's only eight contestants per tournament, single elimination brackets. These things are ridiculously friendly to new players if you want to get into competitive Tim Tim. Uh, yesterday, I, or rather, I saw the um, tournament for today, that happened and some of the players that were inside of it, I only recognize like one name and a lot of people were saying how excited they were to try and play in a tournament, but not have to play in like one of the bigger uh, tournaments. So it's only eight slots. So try and sign up as uh, quick as you can. Again, join the Temporium Discord and you can join those tournaments. Final tournament I will mention coming up is uh, going to, oh, we've got two. Uh, we've got the Plus Weekly on Friday night um, this coming Friday night, but on this coming Saturday, we have the Roadhouse Rumble. Mm. It is an $1,000 Tim Tim tournament. No entry fee. And it is going to be ridiculously crazy and fun. Um, even if you're not big into competitive Tim Tim and you just want to see what it's like, I highly suggest entering these big tournaments with no entry fees because you get to play against some of like the best players and you don't have to pay or lose any. If you lose, you don't lose TMR. You don't lose any Pansons. Um, and if you win, like you get bragging rights. And even if, if you just play, you gain so much experience. So I cannot recommend that enough. All of the links for these are inside of the Temporium Discord. Uh, that is my five minutes. So I'll pass it back up to Bonline. I was watching Perfect. the clock. You hit five minutes exactly. Well done. That I think like I said that Temporium Daily is actually really cool. I like that. I like how digestible it is and and not intimidating and and how good of a chance you can have to be the finalist. That's really cool. That's a nice idea by them. Um, yeah, I, I can't wait to compete in tomorrow. So I'm going to be on the Tuesday Daily. Well, that's perfect. Well, uh, we'll go right into our main topic then. Got a nice twenty five minutes or twenty ish minutes or so for it. Uh, let's go to this one. Um, so we, this is our third episode, yeah, third episode since. Online, the boomer is just going to keep yeah. talking until he figures this out. Um, I don't, I don't know how long this is going to be, but uh... the heck. Hello? Am I coming through yet? Um, whatever it is, uh, we're not on. Well, I mean, I wasn't coming through stream audio, but I'll survive. I'll just oh. hold up pictures of like things I want to say. Uh, I, I, my sorry, I was messing with my. I bumped my headset right as you made me panic. What's going on? What happened to your stream? You, you happened to the stream. No, I, you, I, I, yeah, you I was gonna say, I think you muted uh, stream for a second. Oh, okay. They're saying all good now. I, I was, I double checked the desktop. I didn't get muted at all. Oh, yeah. it was, yeah. it was all messed up. <laughs> hmm. uh, all right. So yeah, we were. You were introducing the main topic. Get back to introducing, 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 man. So I'm just, I'm, I'm catching up on chat after fixing my own mic. <laughs> so it was just uh, you, Kennedy, just you, Kennedy, weren't coming through. No, I you. Guess so. Yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> sure, pretty sure it was you. I don't know if anybody oh. else is coming. Oh, through. okay. Yeah. yeah, no, that was just my my mic cord being dumb. Sorry. Anyways, yeah, we're gonna talk about the the main kiss of attempts. I don't know where what I cut out when or, or what I what did or didn't come through, but I was just saying Kissel's been out for three weeks. We haven't really talked about the new Thames that much, um, like as a deep dive review of them. 
Um, we did a lot of Tem of the Weeks before Kisawa came out, so we thought it'd be cool to just look at four of the new Tems and 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 talk about a little bit more about what the what's cool about them, what you can use them in the in the PvP meta. And so the four that we picked out were Moflank, Size Munch, Veluffy, and Tukai. Is there any particular one you guys want to start out with before the other? Can we do um, Size Munch and uh, Volfi before we do Moflank and Tukai? Yeah, you want to, let's start with Size Munch since he's a starter. All right. Uh, I just talked a bunch. I'll happily talk about Size Munch, but I also want to give you guys space to get your opinion. Well, here, I'll... I, I respect you. Why don't I'll start I with this? I basically only have to, to, to I, the only thing I can really talk about is their appearances. I, I I'm not a competitive player at this moment, so I don't really have a lot to contribute to to anything outside of that, or really even their their PVE uh, ability. Just because uh, I just I, I freak out mean, with Whiplums. That's about it. So <laughs> yeah, real quick, can we just say how freaking cool the heat up animation looks for Size Munch? Like how he does his just like karate thing. I've never actually seen it. I didn't know uh, it was unique for different times. That's really cool. Yeah, well, I mean, I think it's just like his, I'm using a status move um, oh, animation. Okay. But it's, yeah, it is super cool. He no. kind of gets like a little crane karate stance thing going. Listen, uh, Gaijin, I'm I'm perfectly happy all night to just talk about Tem's appearances and, and not keep it. Because as I was telling you guys, as, as much as people like the PvP, a lot of people like the Tem's just for their appearance and their design. Wow, so. we know how shallow you are, Von Lund, So <laughs> Talking nice. about their physical appearance is pretty, pretty expected. No, I'm serious, though. I mean, you got you to think about it. People, out of the player base as a majority... I think more people love and appreciate Thames for their appearance and their their competitiveness in PvP. Don't you think as the, the the entire player base as a whole, if like people picking their favorite Thames out? Oh yeah, I mean the, the one of the biggest things about these types of games, like creature collecting, is collecting because you like like something. Some people want to collect them all, but everybody has favorites, even if they're not the most you know viable as far as it goes for like competitive or PVE or, or just anything. Um, a lot of people really just enjoy like the design of them, and and th that's one of the big thing about these monster and creature collecting games is the design. I personally think Size Munch looks incredible. Like the the I think the the second evolutions are very just kind of you know teenage awkward phases. Like blech, they're they're okay, yeah. they're there. The the first ones are pretty cute. They could have been cuter, but the middle ones are kind of like, you know, we're here. We were a little bit bigger. And then the final evolutions are just like, we're here and we're awesome. <laughs> have no fear because I am here. <laughs> uh, there's a big content creator in the, well, not content creator, a streamer named Karth in the Tim Tim community. Um, and one of Karth's biggest contributions to the Temtem community is he constantly keeps a tier list of uh, his opinion of like how well Tims perform on ladder at higher TMR ranks and their usefulness as far as like overall uh, in PvP. And I talk about it all the time uh, to my partner because she just listens to me talk about Temtem. Um, and last week he made a, uh, joking tier list on the cuteness of Tim's rank, um, <laughs> oh, you know, by their cuteness. And I was like, That's oh, awesome. hey, look, this is, you know, the, this is the cute tier list and this is his number. And she's like, he's wrong. He is absolutely wrong. And she went to the website and made her own tier list from like, uh, all the way, you know, from F tier to S tier and cuteness, um, factors only. And I just like... I don't know. It just gave me a whole another level of respect for her. <laughs> I love that. That's all, that's also I love that a tier list based on just cuteness. But uh, with size bunch, with that said, before we talk about the competitive side of it, I'll just quickly go through the the fluffy part of the wiki forum. Um, under appearance and personality, it says size bunch are great apes, genetically close to humans, and much more sophisticated than their lesser brethren. Highly imitative of human behavior, some are said to be nearing proto-human cognition. And and then if we jump down to the bottom, their trivia is always interesting. It says where their names come from. So um, I think this is pretty obvious if you didn't figure it out before. But when, once you hear it, the name is deriv derived from seismic and punch. And Size Munch could be loosely based on Sung Wukong, the monkey king born of stone from the book, uh, the book, The Journey to the West. So that's cool to see where they're getting their inspiration from. Um, 
with that, Kennedy, I'll kind of open up to you being the competitive guy, um, telling us about what you think uh, competitively people have been or could be using with him. I guess before we get into that, I'll, I'll quickly mention it is a 65% male ratio. So when you breed it, you have that that unfortunate possibility of being gender locked uh, eat more frequently than not. And if we look at it, the base stats as well, it's got the, the very high attack and speed, which is always nice seeing a physical attack. But it's special attack and special defense are both rather low. And the rest of the stats are um, fairly in the middle. Um, the tight matchups for it, it, it takes times two damage from, or excuse me, it does, it, t- yeah, it takes time two damage from water, nature, mental, and digital, but half damage from fire, electric, crystal, and toxic. That's something I like about all, this, all the starters being the dual types. They have so many type advantages and resistances. It's kind of interesting, I think. Um, is there one trait you like more yeah. than the other, Kennedy? Uh, so earthbound is the good trait, but I think self-esteem is also amazing. Like you can do some really silly stuff with it. I think size munch is probably just one of the most solid good Tims or the real, most real solid quick. Good you want to, you want to call out what each of those traits do? One yes. second, guys. I'm just going to be right back real quick before I'm going to, well, well, Kenny is on his, is his right. Okay. Sure. I'm trying to be quick and brief. My no, you're doing sir. great. Take uh, time. Yeah, self-esteem is a trait size much gets since it's a uh, base trait. Whenever it knocks out a Tim-Tim, it clears all status conditions on itself. And then Earthbound is its secondary trait. Uh, whenever it uses an Earth move, it gains one stage of increased defenses. Uh, it only learns two Earth moves, and they're both old techniques. So the amount of times you can proc this um, is going to be limited to you know how long size much can stay on the field earthbound is generally the good trait that people try and run on it but i've seen self-esteem really come in and do wonders for size munch uh that said the things that really make size munch great is that it has the ability to heat up it also has the ability to perfect jab and then it has a move called size munch's wreck which is um specific or rather special to it it is a earth move that deals mm, excuse me uh, it's an earth move that deals a butt ton of uh, damage, and it deals damage to the entire team. Uh, it's one hold, and it's normal priority. And when you have a melee Temtem on the field with it, it synergizes to deal additional damage, but it also changes the typing of the move to be a melee move, uh, which means it can hit into some. Um, it can hit into some of its weaknesses of things that would normally threaten size much out. It looks like it gets a uh, plus that, one priority with that as well. So that's pretty interesting. Yeah. That said, um, I thought when Size Munch came out, I looked at the traits for um, Torton Knight and for Nagais, and I was like, they have such cool traits that are going to so <laughs> define this game. Why did Size Munch just get like such generic, blah, like, oh, I'm here and I deal a bunch of damage? But Size Munch is actually probably arguably the best of the starters because the guys can change a whole game for you um whereas like you have to like if if a deceit aura and the guys gets off um it can just win you the game but you're pretty much 100 percent banned deceit aura and if you don't build a team um around deceit aura with the expectation that you might get it sometimes it's not as good size much is just good anywhere like you can put him on any team he can perfect jab he can raise his attack and he can monkey slam those rocks onto like anything so he's just it, he's, he's a really well designed him i like him well he's got a lot of those cornerstone competitive moves like you said you just called it out but like the, he's got the heat up the perfect jab you just talked about this his special move that's unique to him i assume that no one else can use that move right that's just him yeah, yeah just him. nobody else has side punches wreck um okay well i know did you say you wanted to go into voluffy next or you want to save voluffy yeah yeah let's do voluffy yeah uh, I'll do re- real quick. I'll, I'll just I'll intro. I'll run through the wiki page information quick, and then and then open it up to you again. Um, okay. The the appearance and personality is extremely perceptive and aware. The species flourishes in all sense of the word in the great expanse expanses of wild land. Although they are inquisitive by nature and never shy away from human contact, uh, they breed fifty percent male and female. Their stats are. Uh, Special defense is its highest stats, followed quick, closely by stamina and special attack, while its attack is is very low. 
Um, being a nature and earth dual type, it takes one fourth damage from electric, one half from earth, but twice as much from melee and one half from crystal. So uh, I'll, I'll come back to that in a second, actually. I'll quick finish the fluffy stuff. Um, the name is derived from volps, which is fox in Latin, and the word fluffy, of course. So um, it's interesting that it's part of it. I don't know. I'm guessing you're going to talk about the fact that one of the nice things competitive about just how the fact that it only takes time to damage from melee. Um, I guess to open it up for you, do you want to talk? I'll let you transition to the two traits it has burglar and team exclusive. Both we have two amazing traits, and one of its traits are so is so incredibly good, it devalues how good its other trait is. So you can get a burglar is the bad trait, and I say bad with quotation marks on so um, uh, it's the bad trait on Volfi. And you can get a burglar Volfi for like 12k pan suns because Team Elusive is that good. But if it's not Team Elusive, people Nobody don't. Nobody wants buy to buy it. Yeah. Um, what burglar does is uh, it's its main trait. Um, if Volfi attacks a Tim that is either exhausted or sleeping, it steals its item, and uh, the Tim cannot benefit for the from the effects of its item for the rest of the game. So the Tim has no more item. Um, so if you run heavy hypnosis control or lots of exhaustion, Volfi can take multiple items off the team, which can be absolutely devastating. Um, the thing that is, it's good trait, Team Elusive, uh, Volfi cannot be targeted with attacks that hit um, entire teams. So if you try and Meteor Swarm, while a Volfi is on the field, Meteor Swarm will only hit one Tim. Um, if you try an Acid Reflex while Volfi is on the field, Acid Reflex will only hit one Tim. If you try and relax, uh, Volfi isn't affected by it. Volfi can only be targeted, if you have Team Elusive, uh, Volfi can only be targeted with single target moves. So when Volfis go into Tim's like uh, Raid Boss Nox Alotl, which is a Tim where you don't run any attacks on it except Acid Reflex, which hits the whole team. Um, and Noxolotl basically just keeps healing itself, healing itself, buffing its special attack, and then it hits the whole team with Acid Reflex. Healing itself, healing itself, then hits the whole team with Acid Reflex. Wolfie instantly wins that matchup, because even if it's the only Tim alive, it still can't be hit by multi-target moves with Team Elusive. So that's what makes it so good. There's um, an interesting and, note on that trait page. It says that if Puppet Master would cause a Tem Tem with Team Elusive to be the target of an attack, it will. And Puppet Master does not trigger Team Elusive. So just if anyone's ever wondering how that, that niche mechanic works with Mix. Yeah. Uh, moving from there, uh, beyond this Tem Tem being incredibly cute, uh, something else that I think is <laughs> worth mentioning about Wolfie is that it is... It's a Tim you can actually catch in the storyline and use instantly in the storyline. It doesn't get any egg moves that you have to breed on it to be good. It's got great base stats and when you and it doesn't evolve into anything. So when you catch when you encounter this thing in the Tassa Desert or whatever and you catch it, you can actually just put it onto your party and start going ham and kiss a well with it. Because it's just a great Tim Tim to have. Um, that said, Volfies get really, really healy. They have like three healing moves. And one of the things that makes it so good is how much damage it puts out, um, turn the first couple turns, and then its ability to heal itself back up. Uh, the reason why we see Gyalis being ran is because Volfi is fan flipping tastic by a Volfi. Like, I just cannot say that enough. It's so good. Some some of the interesting moves to call out specifically is it has burrow for that evasion, it has that delightful sap for self healing, chain heal also heals. People really seem to like plague. I think as a hold move. Do you see? Are you seeing plague being run competitively? I'm not sure, but I know when it first came out, everyone was looking at that move pretty closely. Pretty sure plague is used fairly often in competitive. Yeah. I believe. Yeah, plague is its main move um, because it puts exhaustion on a Tim. We yeah. got another item this patch called handcuffs. Whenever you exhaust a Tim, you also trap them. So a lot of people, yeah, a lot of people lead with Wolfie handcuffs and it traps a Tim and then just kills them because it just deals so much damage to everything. What's its third heal move? I'm just trying to figure it out because it's, it's got the chain heal, it's got the uh, rifle sap. You said it had one more, right? 
Yeah, it's got Bush. Um, um, yeah, Bush right is now. really good because um, one of the ways to kill oh. Wolfie is um, poison. Of just, you know, hoping the poison ticks plus the yeah. poison physical damage takes it down. Bush gets rid of all status conditions on it because it puts two statuses on Wolfie. And one of them is regenerating, regeneration, yeah. which just... And, and so. you're talking about it. And the other one is evading, which is, that's a crazy... And if it's synergized with an earth type, it also gets special defense up. So that's a crazy defensive move that it puts on regeneration, <laughs> puts on evasion, <laughs> and gives... Defense. Yeah, and gives special defense two stages up. So that's, that's a it's crazy so move. And uh, Cernif can also learn this move. Yeah, uh, that's really cool. Well, let's uh, we get a Wolfie. Yeah, <laughs> let's let's move, let's jump right into Mo Flank. Um, let me let me read Mo Flank. Yeah, go ahead, Mister Mister talks a lot. Yeah, no, so that you go right <laughs> ahead. Please do. <laughs> Mo Flank is a Temtem based off the Moflan sheep with dark green fur along the top of its torso, legs, neck, head, and a V-shape on its chest, and cream fur on its face and underbelly. Large tufts of dark green fur cover its upper back down to its shoulders. Its thin tail ends in a tuft of cream fur. Its proud angled eyes are ruby-colored and have small dark green stripes underneath them. And the nose is very dark green. Two large horns protrude along the sides of its head and curl upwards to a sharp point. It has tiny hooves that are considerably small compared to its size, with cream fur wrapped along its ankles. With their imposing horns, grazing moflank herds used to be a serious natural hazard of the Kisiwan Plains. The tribe soon learned how to tame them to avoid dangerous stampedes. Uh, and the trivia here for uh, Moflank is Moflank's name is derived from Moflan and oh boy, Ankol <laughs> Watusi. I'm glad you picked this Ankol, one. Ankol Watusi. I'm, I, I'm, I'm assuming that's how you pronounce it there. But anyway, there's that there. It's also got one of the cutest pre evolution forms, Goaty. Oh, so, the designs of the so adorable. Good. But Moflank looks like a complete and total, just straight out, bonafide, cool guy. Like just, just real the, rough and tough. The, but the, this, is, this is not a left field. But I googled that that name of cattle. You'll see it on stream on a delay here. It's a crazy looking cow. I've I've never mm -hmm. seen this before, but it's, it's really cool actually. So you guys, <laughs> yeah, look at it. Yeah, that is interesting. <laughs> That's why Goring does so much damage. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, isn't it? I've Them, never... Uh, those are some big horns. Right? I mean... They, this look, they look almost yeah. like animated or fake. This is I can't believe I've never seen this before. This is kind of cool. I mean, that would be a lot of photos to Photoshop. Uh, right, or, no, that's... I mean... listening to the podcast, like, the horns look like those huge Western horns that you see, like, in saloons, like, of, like, a cow's skull, and, like, the horns are, you know, on the wall. Maybe that's where all like, of these came from, was this breed of cattle. <laughs> I mean, you could, like, fit, like, two or three people on each horn. No, they're huge. That's what I'm saying. It's, uh, that's really cool. Huh. Anyway, sorry, we're getting distracted, but that's just worth worth showing. I think. <laughs> you want me to handle the traits, Vonlin, or did you uh, want to? Yeah, no. I'll, why don't you go into? I'll just quickly say that it's got a lot of good stats. If you look at the color map of it, they're all in green or are almost there, except for special defense, which is in orange. So it's it's well statted. Being a normal type, it only take it takes times two damage from mental with nothing else going on there. Fifty fifty, easy to breed. Uh, it's it, the its first stage. Goaty, I think, is one of the favorite Kisawa cute types. How did Goaty fare on uh, that the tier cuteness list? On willows or uh, on cards? I, I, I was gonna ask both. So go. I was gonna ask for both. Uh, cards put it. Uh, cards put it at the bottom of the tier list. He said its eyes were too big. Really? Uh, Ooh, Willow, unpopular. Yeah, I put it in. Uh, I think she put it in an A tier or a B tier. Yeah. I, I, of like really up there in cuteness but goats aren't her thing goats are for me I'm a, maybe I'm it's a just me lover. but i think i think goat is one of the the cutest new terms i don't know if it's just people i was talking to yeah. at the time but i thought it was one of the cutest new terms so uh yes Goaty, go oh i'm sorry goatee uh mushy and pico i think are like my three favorite <laughs> of cuteness um uh, yeah. as far as, oh go ahead yeah the traits go ahead yep 
Yeah, as far as the traits go, this one is still being debated in the community as far as like which trait is better. On notice is kind of winning over, but uh, Moflink has two great traits. Uh, it's got Hurry Warp, which when it comes out onto the field, for the first turn it's on the field, it gets one free hold for all the moves that it has available. Um, its second trait is on notice. Whenever uh, whenever Moflink is not targeted by an enemy Tim, during that turn, it gains one stage of increased speed, and it the speed can keep stacking each turn it's out on the field that it doesn't get um, hit or targeted by a... Uh, by another player. That said, a lot of people are kind of thinking that on notice is better for PvP, but the reason why I wanted to talk about Moflink uh, down at the bottom, because I think it pairs really well with Tukai, mm -hmm. the numbers of this haven't been tested yet, but I think Hurry Wart's really going to change how we PvE and how we PvE, um, how we free Tim. Um, Hurry Wart gives you one free hold on all of your moves, and uh, Moflink mm. learns uh, learns Cage, which is a one hold move. So what Moflink can do is it can swap, it, or rather, it, you can throw it out. Turn one, it can Cage, and it can put a status condition Ooh. on every ten. Oh, that's um, fascinating. The that's yeah, crazy. So that opener, you can Cage their openers. That's really cool. Well, yeah, but for, for free timing, the more status conditions you can put out, the better your chances oh, of catching. Oh, sure, quickly. So yeah. if you pair it with Tukai, Tukai is the only other Tim that has a turn one move because of its spreader ability that it can hit both uh, slots and deal a bunch of damage and lower them down. So turn one, you can cage a, uh, with Moflank, and then you can um, use Wind Burst with Tukai. Uh, bring both Tims low and put one status condition on them. And then turn two, you can throw out two, two Tim cards, which is faster than the Whiplump Whiplump because it's turn three with two Whiplumps that you're throwing out cards. So you might be mm. able to free Tim a whole two-thirds time I'm curious why this. why two Kai specifically just for Windburst. I mean, Windburst doesn't put a status condition. Oh, is it? Wait. Yes. But when we get to two Kai, we'll be able to discuss it. Two Kai has an ability that when it targets a uh, Tim with a special okay. move, it deals 50% less damage and targets it, it, both Tims. Let's let's jump straight into Tukai right away. So, uh, let's do it! Kind of, um, it, you explain that in a second, and guys, I'll give you a second to get prepared for the, the personality and trivia after that. Oh. What what trade are you talking about right away, Kennedy? Let's just uh, transition um, into it. The spreader trade. It's Tukai's okay. main trade. Uh, when it targets a Tim with a special move, it instead targets the whole team, and the move deals half the damage that it would normally deal. Damn, that that's that's really cool. Actually, I, I didn't know that. No. But also, re really, Vonlin, which one? Hydrologist or spreader? You, <laughs> you had to ask. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't know uh, um, where it was coming from at all. The effect, but yeah, no, I do know what hydrologist does. Fair enough. I didn't even, I didn't even look at that was the other trait. Good, <laughs> that's too funny. Fair, fair, yeah. fair call out. Fair call which, out. Which one do you think I, spread the attack? <laughs> now we had a very brief conversation about this before we yeah. got on stream. I would like to preface this with: don't rush out to buy, you know, perfect two guys and moflings off the. Of, like my advice, this has not been tested of if it's faster or not than like the normal free timing methods. Oh, this, I just feel like theoretically it is. is. It, this is this is a Kennedy build. Okay, this is a in yeah. science. Theoretically, it should. Yeah, be. exactly. Should be. I mean, I think people would like it just to free time without two whip plumps. I don't know about you guys, but I'm kind of getting sick of seeing whip plumps all, all over the place. I am so tired of whip plumps. But yeah. then we'll say the same exact thing about two kai. And, That's okay. Two kai looks you know, cooler than whip plumps, so and I, Mo Flank. I think it'll take a yeah, lot longer. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And plus, whenever I see Moflanks now, I'm gonna think of those cool cows. So I don't know. There's just a lot more going on for this combo. But look, we found. <laughs> We found non PvP things to talk about with these times. I'm I'm genuinely happy about that. But uh, I'm guys, surprised you haven't really discussed a lot of their appearance, Von, and you were all about it. And I then know. here you are, not even not even just what are you talking picking about? them apart and I all got, their flaws. I got derailed oh, by those cool looking cows and those big their horns. Beaks too big. The tails are too long. There's too many of them. 
<laughs> you should go go uh jump right in though and let people know about the the, the personality and uh the fluffy bits on them at, at least this one's a bit shorter i mean i, you I really was, picked was a not long expecting one. yeah i'm not expecting <laughs> mo flag to be like a, a paragraph long just about appearance and personality i mean yeah. they they went all out which well um, actually now you mentioned that it's kind of weird because every other thames page is like one sentence why is mo flanks a paragraph like, yeah, what's up it, with that? It, it was it was unsuspected. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so appearance and personality for Tukai, uh, it is unclear whether Professor Constantinos ever discovered this evolution with its flaming aquamarine wings, a true feature of meta mimetic evolution unseen elsewhere in the whole archipelago. And uh, the the trivia is Tukai's name is derived from Tukana toucan in hawaiian and kai c in hawaiian hmm. um and just for those who don't know it obviously it evolved from two y after being brought to the water shrine uh which is in kisua no actually no where is it it's not in kisua it's it's in dennis it's in it? uh, yeah dennis and the aquamarine yeah. caves i lied don't listen to me i okay. haven't evolved the tukai and i don't know what i'm talking about <laughs> Do you have uh you don't have a Luma and I'm really not trying to insult the Luma, so you don't have a Luma 2Y, but if you had a Luma 2Y out of these three for either of you, is there one that you would pick over the other three? Um I I'm not really a huge fan of any of the three evolutions really? currently available. Really? I mean I think really? uh, controversial. I, I think Turok is probably the best of the yeah. three personally, but just ugh, uh, uh. I might agree with you on that. I'm I'm kind of torn too, like with uh, Gaijin. I think if I had a Luma 2Y, I would wait to see what the fire ones like. Um, yeah. But out of these three, my initial my initial one would be Tukai because I really love the design of Tukai, like its wings and the, like the way the water looks and everything as it flaps in is super duper cool but i don't if like you, the color scheme of luma two guy if you go to temtem uh, strat you can actually see the the whole 3d model of the temtems okay. instead of just the the profile portrait picture yeah i i think i would go with two rock as far as i think it has the coolest color scheme but i think two rock is the least interesting visually out of the three evolutions like i think two vine and two guy look cooler you guys have to keep talking. I'm trying to pull up the 3D. Oh yeah, okay. I see what you're saying, guys. And let me. I, I'm just. I'm pulling up the 3D. Can you make this bigger? Or is it just these little gifs at the top here? You can go scroll, down. scroll down. Scroll down, please. Scroll down, please. Like you oh. can right click on it and pull it out in a, a gif, or just scroll down to the bottom of the page. Okay. Okay. There, there's usually 3D models down oh. there somewhere but you can you can right click on the image and yeah. pull it out into another That's tab right. I'll, I think. Just, I'll, just, I'll just zoom in they lied. look at those golden wings of tukai uh tukai is my choice <laughs> yeah all right yeah, i'll pull them up uh, i i don't know I, I think i'm looking at this i like the turok a lot so far but i'm gonna, I'm yeah. gonna pull them i'm gonna pull them all up turok side looks, side. looks so cool it's, it's very very like aggressive looking yeah, turok does look cool but i guess it kind of looks like a boxy two vine to me this is weird. I actually think I like the normal version of Tukai more. I get too much. Uh, this was Gaijin was referring before. I was kind of making fun of. I didn't like Tukai before, but it's too seagully looking. It just reminds me. It just looks like a seagull. I don't know. I get that's what it's inspired yeah. by, but it just I don't know. It just doesn't. It doesn't click for me. Turok. It's not inspired by a seagull. It's inspired by a toucan. Yeah, really? I get a big <laughs> seagull. I mean, that's that's fair. I don't know. For some reason, I think of seagull when I see it. That's just just my personal little. It's purely a, a subjective. I, I don't dispute that at all. Um, but maybe just leave, maybe just leave it Luma two eyes, the, the answer, but anyway, <laughs> sorry, I'm getting digressed in my, my Luma thoughts of, of what to do with Luma two eye. Um, with that, let's, I listen, let's move straight into doing some plugs quick. Um, guys, it would be nice if, uh, be nice if our usernames were under our, uh, you know, Listen, our, you need our, our, our you chat need, thing. You need you need Dan to be broadcasting to get that fancy touch, but uh, yeah, apparently you have to um, let people it, know it where they can find you. would normally say like Gaijin Boo down here. Normally, that, uh, that's where it would be, but Vonline doesn't know how to broadcast, so. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, I am I am it's Gaijin Boo. Regular Gaijin Boo was taken, so we are we are it, it's I T S G A I J I N B U U. And you can find me on Twitch, Instagram, and Twitter by that username. Uh, that's also my Xbox Live username too. Um, I, I play with people uh, on Sea of Thieves through through Xbox Live. So uh, you know, if you guys want to check out some Sea of Thieves or you know just talk to about Temtem, uh, I good. also stream that on Twitch a lot. That's my main game basically, um, but I do stream other stuff too. But uh, yeah, so those are the places you can find me. And uh, now everybody else's plugs. What about you, Kennedy? I am actually going to forego pl- plugging myself this week. Uh, follow me on Twitter, Presby Kennedy, but um, more so join the Temporium Discord and please jump into some of these tournaments coming up because I want to kick, like, kick your butt, specifically, specifically. you, who are listening to this. Like, <laughs> I want to kick your butt, yeah. Don't look around. Don't look around. You know who I'm talking to. <laughs> all, all I'm going to say is the 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 eternal battle between Tem Talk and Team Talk on YouTube. We need more YouTube subs than Team Talk. So YouTube.com forward slash C forward slash Tem Talk. So we don't get auto corrected away to Team Talk every time someone searches for Tem but, Talk. But you can find us on Twitter at Talk Tem. So it's hard to say exactly where we're going with this. The the Talk Tem, you know what? It's it's been a long running meme, but at Talk Tem it won't auto correct to Team Talk. So maybe that would have been a better pick in the first place. So I don't have to compete with Team Talk. Uh, <laughs> All right, so going to our, our our turn 30 for today, I didn't ask you guys in advance if you had anything you wanted to do. So I will, I have my own chat. that I want. I just want to shout out real quick to chat. You guys are so cancerous and I love you. <laughs> I'm afraid to ask what they were even doing. Oh, just <laughs> just Chili Pepper and M. Farah. Just, just getting ready to be kicked in the butt <laughs> by, but by oh. Daddy Presby Kennedy. Is this, this Kennedy's tournament challenge. <laughs> apparently, apparently. Um. So for for turn thirty, this is the this, the new segment I introduced last week, which is something for in the world outside of Temtem for the, just the last couple of minutes of the show. I just watched. Finally, I know I'm late to the party on this, but I just watched Hamilton on Disney Plus. Finally, have you guys both seen it? What's Hamilton? Kennedy, Kennedy, guys, you're joking, right? You're you're joking, right? That's that's a joke, right? I can't, I, no. What what is Hamilton? I can't tell if it's true. Have you really, not, have you really not seen it? Hamilton, or do you want me to? I've, I've really not seen. I don't, I've never heard of it. So I don't Hamilton, even know what Hamilton, Hamilton is. is a Broadway play um, about Alexander Hamilton done by, uh, by like by Broadway, and it's on Disney Plus, and it's going to change your life. You need to go watch it, guys and Boo, and anyone else that hasn't seen it. Uh, it's going be, to what, change uh, my life. I, I have a feeling like changing my life is a very big overstatement. Can I, can I go ahead? Can I, it is a hip hop Broadway musical, um, and it takes the story of the founding fathers and tells it as a hip hop story of like basically rags to riches, and it tells the whole story There's, of the American Revolution through yeah, like it's 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 actually fantastic. There's a rap um, battle yeah. between Thomas Jefferson and Alexander yeah. Hamilton. I'm, I'm pretty sure I've seen that on epic rap battles of history, but <laughs> like, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's not going to change my life, but I'll check it out. But no, it is. But it, in all seriousness, it's it's very cool. It's 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 the, the the thing that they kind of say at the end of it is how everyone knows about all the founding fathers and like all their stories get told, except for Alexander Hamilton. So I think that's kind of their inspiration for doing it. And like yeah. me personally, like I didn't know that much about him and learned a ton of really fascinating things. Plus, as Kennedy's saying, it's just it's amazing that it's this hip hop, but like it's done by like Broadway level production quality and professionalism. So um, I, mean, I watched I, it. I love musicals personally. Like I'm, yeah. I'm a big fan of musicals, but I just I, I haven't watched a whole ton of them, but I do enjoy them. <laughs> <laughs> Go check it out. I'm seriously, you're seriously gonna really enjoy it. Um, Hamilton. Holds the record for one of the hardest to perform songs on Broadway. One of their tracks 
uh, guns and ships gets, uh, I think its average is 17 words per second. Um, oh, of, damn. Like, you know, like singing the track and it's just crazy. Like the uh, the guy who plays Lafayette, like one of the oh, um, yeah, yeah. French men of the revolution. Fantastic. Like the just way he has to sit there and spit that line or just like, you got to put the button to the letter that's in the bed and get your right hand man back. It's it's just, yeah. oh, it really I love is. Hamilton. It's really amazing. I watched it, and then literally later that same day, I listened to like the entire soundtrack while I like was doing errands and like chores and cleaning because I just couldn't get enough of it. So, yeah. Guys, can I recommend a song for you? I don't know how often you take uh, song recommendations, but if you look up one of the more traditional, just like uh, more musical songs, I guess from Hamilton is a song called "Wait for It," um, and it, that's mm. a pretty that's a pretty solid like what you're gonna get as far as like emotion and quality and performance out of hamilton like listen to wait for it and if wait for it doesn't hook you you might not like hamilton but if you listen to it and you're just like what is this like hmm. you're in for a heck of a great ride this looks like it'd be interesting i mean i i just pulled up the lyrics for for guns and ships and i'm i'm genuinely curious it's funny because they do this really serious history topic with this like the fun of hip-hop and like there's like an adult tones like where they're like they'll be like I, i'm not gonna swear on this but they'll just do like funny swearing that you're not expecting in a broadway play about the american revolution so it's uh it's it's really fantastic yeah hmm um, what else Curious. to say about it? I don't know, Kennedy. We anything else we should? Ma What's your favorite song I, from a Kennedy? My favorite song is "Satisfied." The character I see oh. the most eye to eye with is Angelica Schuyler. Yeah, and yeah. so like "Satisfied," like unrequited love was like great the whole, character. Yeah, that was like the whole twenty-seven years of my life until I met Willow. Like oh. just right there. Oh man. So. It's, uh, <laughs> it's fantastic. I don't know. The I don't have to say my favorite is either I don't know what the names of them are, but the one where he's I'm not gonna throw away my shot or uh in the room. I'm pretty sure that's just called my shot. Yeah, my shot. That's just that's so amazing. I was watching an interview with the composer who also plays Hamilton, and he said it he took a year to write that song. Which is crazy. It took him like seven years to write the whole musical. That's crazy, like, really. Yeah, when he first started writing it, he actually performed for the White House uh, back when Barack Obama was president. Like, no that's how kidding. That's... long that musical wow. was in production. So, so listen, yeah. if, if, if it wasn't going to get my Disney account a band, I literally would share my Disney account with everyone listening so they can all go access it in case you don't have a Disney Plus account. But I better not do that. Inappropriate. So. Inappropriate. Yeah. Oh. Um. All right, so that's. Uh, uh, I was gonna say who are we gonna raid, but we can't raid Wait, anyone. So, so, so Vonlin's turn thirty is just talking about Hamilton, and then nobody else gets to talk about anything. No, okay. we do. We do one per show. So Kenny did last week's. I did this week, and then I was just gonna say you have you have to come up with one for next week now. So think about it. But yeah, we just do one per show. Wait, I thought that was like what else have we been up to? I thought turn thirty no. is just talking about stuff that we're doing not related to Temtem. <laughs> no, no, it's literally just it's just like a. It's supposed to only be like three minutes where, to just feature where was like this, one thing. Where was this stated? Wow. There, there's we no only... rules or regulations about this. We've done it once, and you've never said any of this stuff until um, literally right this second. We only get Gaijin's attention for an hour and a half each week, so this is his first time ever hearing about Turn 30. Yeah. Just disregard the messages you sent about it last right. week. Thank no. you. Thank you, you Kennedy. Have to exactly. Him right now, okay? You have to inform him right now. All of those messages... Also, also, we are we go over time every week as is, so we definitely don't have time to do multiple turn thirties each week. It's it's supposed to be like three minutes long. So, but no, Kennedy or, or Gaijin, think about it. You can. It's gonna be turn thirty next week. It's gonna be all you. Okay. So think no. of what you want to talk about or feature for it. But who 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 else would like to? Be a uh, uh, host on on Samsung. I'm, I'm done here. Um, I'm gonna go start my own podcast now, so well, I can just do. No, he cool. has the Twitter. Bob whoever, whoever, whoever you are, just uh, come prepared with your own turn thirty. Okay. Tem Talk. Um, I I own Tem Talk. Um, this podcast is a fake. So. <laughs> Well, listen. I was gonna uh, as as I'm trying to write this down here. I was gonna go rate us, but I don't. We don't have actually have rating powers right now, so I don't know. Is there any, I'm gonna actually. Um, wait, wait. Give me somebody. Give me somebody to. Oh, give me somebody to raid. Uh, 
What's his? Uh, Liam made me a um, okay. You just moderator. Just, I'll yeah. try the command. I don't know if it works. So just I mean, right now specs there doing competitive. Yeah. There's you know a bunch of smaller streamers too. I, I don't really. I will say many. me and me and Grim are gonna speak. we're gonna co-op. Yeah, hunt. I can't do it. Never mind. We're gonna co-op Luma Hunt, Snakey Boy, or Phil for like an hour right after this. But I can't rate. I'm obviously have to shut down and then switch channels. So. What's that? you <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah so go our, our our manual raid is go check out specter <laughs> or wait for me and grim to to pop on in a couple of minutes but otherwise have a good week everyone guys you can have a good week well. obviously I, we didn't announce it last week we're gonna do the show monday nights at this time every week moving forward it uh, lets us cover the side parks uh, changes a little bit better and just any other news from throughout the whole weekend or early in the week on Monday. So thank you so much, everyone. Until next time. Bye-bye. Have a good week.